right, so I have finished the Avatar Last Airbender live action Netflix uh, TV series. Was it the worst thing I've ever watched in my life? No. Um, but I've also like seen Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and that really put the bar underground. Um, was it the worst anime adaptation I've ever seen in my life? Still no. Um, cause you know, that Dragon Ball one exists. It's worse than the American adaptation of Death Note, which was essentially a Final Destination movie. But like, this was not good. It was overly preachy. The entire thing is just exposition dumps. Very, very few of the characters felt like themselves. Um, yeah, exposition dumps upon exposition dumps with no heart or emotion to these characters. I'm mostly angry with Katara because like you take away her rage, you take away her compassion, you take away her motherly instincts, you take away the fact that she had to step up and raise her brother and be the mother as she has lost her own mother. You take away um, her struggle and jealousy to become a bender, instead make her a prodigy, a pom -pom prodigy who doesn't need a master and is her own master. She is not the same character, it's boring. And I hated everything they did with her. Like you take one of my favorite characters from the show, strip her of every character trait she has and all her personality and give me this bland, preachy, perfect thing that's not, I, it's not Katara. This is not Katara and I hate it. Um, like all the joy has been stripped from this series and you leave behind. What they've added is just a lot of violence and they think violence is good writing, is mature, not themes and character works and story arcs and emotion and passion. No, if you have a violent moment or violent death or really good, anim uh, not animation, yeah, well, CGI animation, whatever, um, then that, that equates to mature and good writing. And it is horrible. And I'm upset. This genuinely upset me. Um, but what upset me more was what episode did I leave off on? Was it episode four? And I think that's the one people liked. Um, my heart, like rip my heart out, stomp on it and spit on it. Not through trauma, but just sheer disrespect to a franchise and its characters. King Boomy was a wonderful, wonderful character. I loved him. Ang's childhood friend, the the mad genius that he was, has become a bitter old man who, fair, fair, like you can have a character that war and choices and sacrifice, the hard choices that you make in a war has beaten him down and made him grumpy and resentful and hatred in his heart. Sure, that is a fine character. It's not Boomy. The, care, the trials that he put Aang through in the original were meant to make him think out of the box, to look at things from different angles, have imagination and joy. And then the final thing of being, what is my name? And having to figure that out and telling him when you face the Fire Lord, face him like a mad genius. That was all what I love King Boomy. This man in this uh, episode, whatever the hell it was, was not King Boomy. I hated it so much. Like, again, I am all for change. You can change whatever the hell you want about a story and an adaptation to make it fit the medium. That's fine. I don't care about the plot. I don't care about the lore. I don't care about the history. I care about nothing other than the fact that the characters feel like themselves, have their personalities, their core self of who they are, let the characters be themselves and do whatever the hell you want with the world and the plot and however you make them interact, sure. But make them still be themselves and their characters that I love. That's all I want. That's the only consistency I want from an adaptation is that the characters feel like themselves. And you do that to King Boomy. It took me three days to get through that episode. I nearly dropped it entirely for his portrayal alone. And if I wasn't going to like FaceTime a friend to talk about the show, I would have just completely dropped it. All right. Uh, one like little thing I liked about the show is the focus it had on visiting the temples. Don't get me wrong. I think the trip to Roku's temple um, in what episode six or something like that was completely stupid. And it was a 
issue. It was just something that they did in the plot because it happened in the original series. So, oh, we have to go to Roku's temple. Let's just make a detour and force that into the narrative. Um, but I did like when they went to the temples to speak to the other avatars. So I did like that being a focus. So whether it was Kiyoshi or Roku or um, the, the the one everyone forgets about that focus on the spirit world in the water tribe starts with K, Koban, and don't really care. Um, yeah, I feel, I do feel bad about not remembering his name. Um, but so I do like going to the temples and speaking to the other avatars, hearing about them, their history, how they view the avatar state and responsibilities and stuff like that. I like that, that focus there. What I didn't like is that this is book one water. The point of this uh, first season was many points, which were completely skipped over. Um, but you know, learn water bending. Aang does not water bend once in this thing, other than when he is possessed by the ocean god spirit and is goes to the kaiju form here, which is fine. That's always cool. But like, he didn't learn to water bend at all. And I'm like, you. Yeah, you kind of skipped over and a big point of the training of being the Avatar is learning the, to bend the elements in a very specific order. And you kind of skipped over him learning to water bend. Oh, and back to Boomy. I didn't even uh, mention the fact that uh, he's really upset about Aang for running away and still being a child and just like leaving the world to their fate. Again, a big problem with the initial change from the beginning because he didn't run away. He went for a breather and got caught in a storm. There was no running away. He didn't run from his responsibilities. He got caught in a storm. He did not choose to run away, which makes that choice even more stupid. Um, something I like, something I like. Um, I, I liked when Uncle Iroh was captured and the entire time I'm just thinking, Dragon of the West, come on, come on, fire breath, fire breath. I didn't get fire breath, but that's fine. Um, but I also really love the uh, choice that Zuko had that he could either continue to go pursue the Avatar or go save his uncle. And of course he went to save his uncle. Um, I was, uh, very much emotional when we see, um, Uncle Iroh's, uh, son, um, Luten, uh, at his funeral and everyone's saying, he died honorably in battle. It's an honor. And then they're talking behind his back. How dare General Iroh uh, run away just because he lost his son and abandoned his position and his war. This will bring shame to him. Um, and uh, Zuko goes up to him being like, he fought nobly for the Fire Nation. It was an honorable death. You should be proud, uncle. And he goes to walk away, but he knows that's like an empty promise, empty words, and it's not bringing him comfort. So he sits with his uncle and tells him a story about how uh, Lieutenant had given him this medal when he was struggling um, and not doing well in school and his father was disappointed in him and Lieutenant had given him this medal saying it should be held by someone who's meant to do great things. Oh, it's so emotional. I can't even. I'll break into tears. Um, that moment, yes, a thousand percent fantastic addition. Um, worth it for this series to exist for that moment alone. In fact, a lot of the moments with Uncle Iroh and Zuko and Blue Ten just in talking about them are all, all all great all great I loved uh Zuko going to free his uncle uh but his uncle getting attacked in the back by a uh, earthbender and Zuko being like this is why you can't trust these kind of people they have no honor and so I I did really enjoy all that uh but the best addition to it by far was Okay, the Agni Kai was not that great, but afterwards, when um, uh, he had stood up to protect this division of Fire Nation soldiers who were going to be used as fodder and bait uh, to lure out another attack and just be sacrificed, uh, so then you had the Agni Kai, and his father had said when he was recovering, if you care so much about this division, take them with you. They will be your crew. So to know that the crew that is following him and didn't even know, um, but on this exile journey with Zuko, were the people that he saved, the ones who would be dead without him. And when they learn that, they're like, okay, you are our prince. We will follow you. We are loyal to you. Oh, that was, that was a good addition. So this show had like three good moments. Um, then you got like the cave of two lovers going on with Sokka and Katara. And I'm just like, what? Why are you here? 
Um, so Aang and Katara are not getting together at, at the end of this version of the series because you have removed, again, all the little moments of buildup that has happened with them in the first season. Um, so Katara's not the first face he sees smiling and beautiful when he wakes up. Um, they have no emotional bond. It's, I think that one moment at the end, it's her voice that sort of brings him out of, uh, the trance with the, the moon spirit and the ocean spirit, but not really. I think he was already coming out of it on his own, but we've removed like three other moments where it's her voice that brings him out of it. Now we've removed the scene with the cave of two lovers. Yeah, they just have no setup whatsoever. Um... Uh, and then Katara is just unnecessarily arguing with Sokka and it just feels so forced and it's not like her at all um, to just randomly jump down his throat for no reason. I, I hate, I hate it. Everything with their section. 100%. She just feels like a bratty child. Um, and I'm literally waiting for her to do like a little mermaid and say like, I'm not 16. I'm 16. I'm an adult or something like that. I just, I, I hate it. I hate everything with Katara in the series. Um, another positive. I have a positive. Uh, the way war is portrayed. So again, we talked about the earthbender that attacked Iroh. He had lost his, was a brother or a son or someone during the war, during a food shortage, his, his brother had given away his rations and was just a kind person trying to help. Um, and then Boston's not Boston's not, uh, they're attacked and he ends up dying in the attack. And now uh, this man has a hatred for all firebenders. So to show that continuous hatred that is born in war. And then afterwards, uh, you also have like in the water tribe, uh, you see the death and destruction and named characters who fall like those, like it does do a good job in showing like just brutality of war, but to show brutality of war is not a hard thing to do and should not really be praised that hard because it's the easiest thing in the world to portray. I, I'm, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel for like compliments for this series. Um, Azula. So first of all, we have Ozai complimenting Zuko about finding the Avatar. In what world does Ozai give Zuko a compliment? That didn't make sense to me. But um, Azula, I don't hate her. It's just like they have her cracking a little too early. I, I get her wanting to be perfectionist. That was already established in the original series from the beginning as well. But like she doesn't have Azula's wit and cunning and bloodthirst that I was expecting. In fact, she has a lot of insecurities and it feels like she's cracking under pressure already when that really shouldn't come until her friend's betrayal. So I, I don't like where we're going with Azula at all in terms of, I liked her as this menacing villain, the bloodthirst, the evil, powerful character. And then granted, we didn't get much insecurities between her mother and father and all the insecurities that happened more so at the beach. Um, and then finally cracking at the end. And then you could argue that it's good to introduce those security insecurities earlier on, but then we lose who she is as a character. And again, I'm all for the changes, but keep the core character the same. And I feel this is a change that detrimentals her character as a whole. Uh, when they go to the spirit world, I heard a lot of people not liking this um, episode, but Again, I'm fishing for compliments here, but this is the one that I did enjoy. I liked this with the flashback with Katara, uh, seeing her mother's death, feeling responsible for it, um, trying to help but not having the power, not being a waterbender strong enough to help and her mother taking the fall for her. Um, no, I enjoyed that entirely. That's a very good moment. And same thing, Sokka overhearing his father saying he's disappointed in how the um, ice spear one dodging thing went um, and his friend had to like take over for him and he feels unworthy and not a good warrior. He didn't really pass this on his own merits and like him as a questioning him as a leader and hearing his father talk about him the way that he did. Those were all great inclusions and I loved it. I love how easily um, Sokka and Katara were led down these memories through the image of people they love, their mother and father. 
Uh, whereas Aang, when presented with his home, is just like, no, this is just an illusion. It is not real and knows to walk away. To show that difference in understanding of the spiritual world, I really, really enjoyed that. And then I would just completely cut the next episode and journey to Roku's temple because it felt forced and it was only there because it was there in the original series and didn't do much for the plot other than to learn and get something to get to Ko to get the people back so they don't get eaten. Again, you could have got that some other way. I am choosing to say I like the stuff with the blue spirits. It was fine. It was by the books. It could have been a little bit longer if we cut out the stuff with Roku's temple. Um, I did like them talking about how Ozai would be the uh, new spiritual leader rather than the Avatar and bring up kind of new worlds uh, for the Fire Nation and Fire uh, Culture and all that. So I guess one good line there. Um, yeah, I, I have no complaints against the Blue Spirit. It didn't hit the same, but it was fine. Uh, it was around this point in time that I realized like the runtime of this series versus the original, they have zero excuses all I'm saying because I think the Netflix series is like 45 ish minutes shorter ish. Uh, it's about the same length runtime as the original season one. So I'm taking back most of my understanding because they just chose to put in unnecessarily violent scenes and moments with barely any additional at it good moments again so uncle iroh at his son's funeral the inclusion of the uh zuko's crew being um the ones he saved i like the flashbacks with katara and saka with uh, their parents but that is about it that's the only added things that this series has brought that i've enjoyed and think added something to the series so every other change every other exposition dump Everything else that has happened, removing all the passion, removing Aang learning to waterbend, removing the jealousy that Katara felt towards Aang's natural gifted talent for airbending and waterbending, just removing all that is pointless. It did nothing and it was not needed because the runtime is near identical. Um, we added in an ungodly amount of time talking about brush strokes and bristles of brushes in Zuko's notebook. But at the same time, I do appreciate them uh, talking and bonding. So Aang and uh, Zuko were bonding over how their teachers uh, would not let them go off training until they did so many exercises uh, with the, the writing exercises. So, I, I mean, you're bonding a little bit there. So that was okay done, sort of. Oh, oh, I do like that. Uh, it was compassion that uh, really triggered Zuko. So Aang is being very compassionate towards him, his life, the war, being trapped, saying, couldn't we be friends? And that compassion is what really triggered Zuko into anger because it was compassion that got him exiled. Compassion is weak is now what his father has instilled on him and to care for others hurts you. So the compassion to care about his crew led to the Agni Kai com uh, compassion not wanting to fight his father. First of all, though, Agni Kai... Uh, Zuko did start fighting. First he was just dodging and then he was given an opportunity where he could have attacked Ozai and chose not to. The fact that they even had Zuko raising his hand to his father for a moment, for an instant, no, no refusing to believe that ever happened. He did not at that age or time have the ability to raise a hand to his father, let alone consider attacking him and changing his mind. No, that thought would never cross his mind no just no just no uh when they get to the northern water truck what is with ua's hair what kind of wig is that that's been beaten to death online but i gotta say it because what the actual hell the costumes while i still say they need to be dragged through the dirt and snow a little bit um the costumes have been consistently one of the best things about the series again just run them through the dirt and snow make them look lived in in this world and not just taken off the hanger um but Yue's hair that is ridiculous um I did like that they made her have a spirit form in the spiritual world so she could be introduced to Sokka a little bit earlier um I like that so the relationship was not quite as rushed as the movie that does not exist oh uh, my god the plot convenience of Momo getting hit by falling debris saving some kids so they have to take him to the spirit oasis like people are actively dying in this war your job is to protect the princess and evacuate the city and you take the time to save your pet lemur that you've been wanting to eat from the beginning it just feels like a big plot convenience 
Um, then you have the moment where, again, Katara is her own master now. People refer to her as Master Katara. She has never trained under anyone but herself. She has had one scroll to teach her anything, uh, but can now take the moves that she sees Earthbenders use, convert that to be water and ice style, and is her own master without any need for proper training. She's just a prodigy who can do it all on her own and then brings all the women to help fight. They're standing around looking like, yes, we shall fight too. I hate everything with Katara. Um, when Zuko comes up and says, so you found a master. It's like, yes, me. I'm, oh my God, I hate it. I hate it so much you have destroyed her character arc. And I can't, I, I oh my God, I hate it. Uh, they take away, uh, okay, one of my favorite moments with Uncle Iroh is him defending the ocean spirit, or sorry, the moon spirit. And then after the, the Zhao guy stabs the, the fish, he turns to Yue as like, you have been touched by the moon spirit. And it's his words that trigger her to realize that she can put the spirit back in there. Nope, he just books it. He's gone. He, he's leaving. He's going to go find his uh, nephew and get out of here. Like, I, I loved his moment in the Oasis in the original. And it's so, you don't get him feeling like a really good character, a kind character, the way that it comes across in the original. And everything is just so rushed. And again, Ang has never learned waterbending. He's possessed by the ocean spirit. Full rage, Avatar's gone. And then at the end, when everything has settled down, you have, uh, Yue has been killed, well, sacrificed to become the new moon spirit. And Saka is more upset than her father, and her father has to comfort him. And I'm like, why? I just hate, I hate it all. I hated it so much. Very few things I enjoyed about this series. I am praying season two goes better. I... I got nothing else. I got, I don't understand the ones who like this series. I'm happy. I'm happy you like this series. I'm so happy you found joy in this. But like in terms of all the themes were removed, the character arcs were removed, the passion was removed, the joy was removed, and they just added some violence and made everyone depressed. And that's not entertaining. So that's all I got. I did not enjoy season one. I'm assuming I might watch season two. But my friend also didn't like it. So maybe if they quit, then I can quit too. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.